welcome back to Daytime Ottawa here on Rogers TV. Well, on Mondays, we like to learn about everything. We learned about our credit cards. Now we're going to learn a little bit more about communication and how we communicate and ways to improve our communication with NLP trainer and author Roger Ellerton is here today. Roger, thanks a lot for joining us. My welcome pleasure. Welcome to our Thank show. You. Well, this is a good discussion to have, and we had an interesting discussion with you before uh, the show in the green room about communication. I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there on what it entails. From your point of view, give us your view of the components of communication. My goodness, you really opened up a can of worms there. <laughs> in fact, you've almost given me the task of putting an elephant into a shoebox. <laughs> there was so much to say about it. But the first thing I'll say is, is that when we think of communication, we think of just the words we say. Right. And it's more than that. For example, I get the words, you know, this is a great TV show. So I can say, this is a great TV show? Or ah. this is a great TV show. Same like words. like the second one. <laughs> you know, <they laughs> Same words, different meaning. So there's a lot that goes on in terms of your tone of voice, your physiology, et cetera. And there's even more than that. For example, if you think about uh, uh, a festive season, maybe Thanksgiving or something like that, or when Cliff's cooking something neat here, and you smell a really neat aroma in the air, and you smell that, it puts you in a, in a mood, and the conversation's quite different. So it's not just what you hear or, or what you see, it's also the, the, the other senses as well, what you, you smell and taste. Uh, for example, why do we use deodorants you know, or, or perfumes? I mean, it creates an ambience, et cetera, that facilitates the conversation. So, th so this is all, all great that, that we take this in. The, the flip side of that is we don't take in all the information at, at, at any given moment. Yeah, we spoke about that before the show, and you, you mentioned that we're taking in really like four billion bits of information in a very short period of time, but only using about 2,000, or I guess hearing 2,000 bits of that information, correct? Yeah, it's four billion. We have access to four billion bits of information, and we uh, actually process conscious about 2,000, not just hearing. We also right. see it, we could feel it, et cetera. And we, we pay attention to the 2,000 bits that we perceive to be important. Okay. Now, for example, until I mention it, are you aware of how your right foot feels? My right foot <laughs> feels? <laughs> you, you, you are, yeah, we'll do that one. <laughs> Not really. Well, now that you mention it, I Ex am. Exactly, because until I mentioned it, you didn't think it was important, but you say, well, well this guy's just mentioned my right foot. It must be important. I will focus my attention there. And in doing that, you either lost something visually or auditorily to put your some, some of the 2,000 bits down on your right foot. Okay, so there's lots of information that we filter out, we don't process because we perceive them to be not important. So is that a good thing or a bad thing that we filter it all out like that? Yes, is the answer. Yes, <laughs> ah. Good and bad. If we tried to process all four billion bits, we'd just go crazy, it'd be overload. Uh, and on the flip side of that is sometimes we focus on the 2,000 bits. Well, first of all, we focus on the 2,000 bits that we perceive to be important and they may get us into trouble or they may lead us down a, a, a path that we don't want mm -hmm. to follow. For example, if, if I have a belief, and it, and it really spins on the belief, if I have a belief that Derek is not a good interviewer, then no matter how good his question is, I'm going to perceive it through my beliefs and pick up a tone of voice or a body a gesture, something like this, that, that proves to me that he's not good, and then I will respond to him in a tone of voice or a gesture to emphasize that <laughs> so other people can also see right. that he's not up to it. Whereas if I think you, TL, are, 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 are really great, no matter how good or bad your question is, I'm going to hear it as a positive question, as a really great question, and respond in that way. Okay. And we do this with our friends, our family members, our co-workers, et cetera. We put them into a box, and we hear them in a certain way that really restricts how big they can be. In fact, we, I like to say we make them very small. Right. And it's very difficult to get out of that box once you put somebody, I mean, I've done it, I'm sure you've done it, you know, guilty as charged. So how can we learn to be more flexible in our, am I opening another can of <laughs> I think so. Yeah? I think so. Oh my goodness. Can he answer it in 30 seconds? Well, I just, out of the corner of my eye, saw that 30 seconds and went, what? Uh, Roger, you know what? I think we're gonna we're gonna have to ask you to come back yes. and Great. take us through. And you have a, a, a lots of information. Can you pass me the book? There, Absolutely. Derek? In your book, it's called "Live Your Dreams, Let Reality Catch Up." It's full of great information like this and great examples that take you through some of these exercises. We thank you very much for Pleasure. coming and giving starting us off. <laughs> we're gonna have you back to talk about some of the solutions as well. Pick up Roger's book. It's very full of information. We're gonna take a really quick break. We'll be right back after this.